and quite impressive. I just have one question. Um, in your valuation, what's the payout ratio you use for dividends? Uh, the payout ratio is 40%, which KCB is expected to maintain over the, period, over the coming years. Okay, thank you. Um, on, on the data sources that you used, can you um, tell me what the sources are for, for the data you've collected? Uh, please tell me what they are. One. Uh, one of them would be the um, CBK Bank Supervision Report. Um, uh, also the KCB Financial Report previously, uh, for previous years. Um, as amongst other, uh, also the World Bank reports to give us a view on the economic performance of the region, amongst others. So you're saying the main ones are the CBK, the KCB financials, and the World Bank reports for, the, for economic forecasts? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me where you've used the CBK um, data in your, in your slides? Um, can you show me the slide? Uh, okay, um, getting the minimum uh, capital adequacy ratios, we got that from the CBK reports. Um, from the prudential guidelines. Um, um, also, the KBRR, information about the KBRR, we got that from the CBK um, website and also some of the reports. That's it. Also, the, the aggregate bank um, ratios and figures, we got that from the KCB um, and from the CBK um, reports, as well as also the market, market analysis of the various banks. Okay, here I'm looking for the non-performing loans and the Kenyan market in the banking industry. Did you consider that data from the CBK? Yes. And if you did, where is it? Sean, and wh where is the effect of that, Sean? Um, uh, this, yes, this is the, this is the um, Kenya banking sector's NPL ratios. Um, Okay, well, I'm sorry, I, I don't see it. Anyway, getting to on to the next, um, the next point. Um, have you done an analysis of uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? Well, yes, yes, we've done that. Uh, on the strengths, we looked at the strategies of KCB. Uh, I can use the laptop. On the strategies of KCB and how it has impacted KCB through increased revenue, for example, through the new business opportunities. On the weaknesses, we looked at the investment risk through an analysis of the various risks that can affect uh, KCB, which also constitutes the threats. And after this risk regard analysis, we still maintained our buy recommendation. Okay, B based on this analysis, you still see a net margin interest. The, the net interest margin remaining at 10.5% for the foreseeable future? Uh. Yes, um, because we, we don't see the, um, okay, yes, the KBRR and other, there's external pressure for the banks to reduce their lending rates, but we see that they will also reduce their deposit rates and um, we also do not expect other um, market rates uh, on, say, like government securities to come down um, 
quite significantly. Okay, thanks. Okay, there's a slide where you had, exp you had talked about the... I'm just following up on his question. He had talked about the net interest margin decreasing by a certain percent. Maybe you can look at that. I can't remember which slide it was. Okay, <clears throat> here, uh, due to pressure from external stakeholders such as the government and the CBK, we mm -hmm. expect that the lending rate to decline fairly in the East African, in, in Kenya especially, in this, and the East African region, except for South Sudan, due to the de increase in the NPL ratio in that country. But in the East African region, we expect the lending rate to decline. So the bank will not make much on the net interest margin, but on its volumes, when it comes to, due, due to the potential large loan tickets that they will give out to mining industry and, and projects, development projects in the county governments, we expect they will make more on volumes and not on the net interest margin. Okay, but doesn't that contradict with what you have just said? Okay, that's point number one. And then why 9 to 10 percent? Okay. How did you come up with that figure? Okay, that was an estimate like uh, it is an average, average rate with which the, the interest spread the interest will, will, will narrow down. As in, we couldn't figure out like an exact one figure to, to predict how the interest rate will be. Okay. Um, could you please go to your slide on the scenario analysis? No, this is a scenario analysis. Okay, in terms of coming up with the base case, the worst case, the best case, what did you put in there to come up with the base case? What did you, I mean, what did you put, what variables did you put in to come up with these cases? To say this is the worst case, this is the best case? Uh, the variable that we put in is the average growth rate of customer deposits mm -hmm. of KCB Kenya. This we got from the banking survey, taking average for the last three years. For our base case, it's, it's, the, it's KCB's historical three years CGR on customer deposits. And our worst case is the industry growth rate, and our be best case is the Taiwan Bank's growth rate. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember from the little I've read, is that the case, when you come up with the base case, it's actually a combination. For example, you throw in there the economy, the what, the what, and the what, and then they remain consistent according to those cases, then the numbers are the ones which change. Okay. Um, I just want you to tell me why should I buy KCB? Uh, uh, one is that KCB has a huge amount of assets compared to its peers and it has room for improving its efficiency. So if it's able to improve its efficiency and raise its return on assets, it will be able to make much more than, the, than its peers in, Eastern, in East Africa. Another point is they have, they're very big in, on corporates and they have established a, a consistent partnership with the government. And with these development projects or the infrastructure projects that are happening around the country, we'll ensure that KCB will get this, this uh, finan uh, financing. So, and then the KCB also is trying to ensure that they venture into mortgage-backed securities, which we ensure that they utilize the assets that they have to get a higher return on assets. So that way you, so we support that KCB, you should buy KCB because of these reasons. S sorry, um, I forgot your name. Uh, Abdul. Is it Abdul? Or? Yes. Yeah? Abdul, you know, I, I have a problem when someone tells me that uh, this, is going to, this is going to improve because they can improve their efficiency. If their efficiency is inadequate, why hasn't it already been improved? Uh, we expect that they will improve because KCB are committed to improving their efficiency. Where, where are they deficient uh, in their efficiency that in they can improve on? Are in terms of uh, the, the branches, they, they have so many branches, especially in South Sudan. They can try and improve, increase using alternative methods such as agency banking and internet banking. In South Sudan? 
in in all in all the, in all over the region. But if you look at uh, the latest financials, the number of branches has actually gone up. So does this uh, go against your assumptions? Uh, the, the branches have gone up, but the agency banking through the agents have risen at a higher percentage. So this shows that 2014 is a really good year, and management is key on uh, sticking with the agenda of moving from brick and mortar banking to agency banking and mobile banking. Agency banking has really performed well. For example, in 2014 alone, according to the latest quarter three results, they have, called, they have collected 9.2 billion shillings. This will increase their customer deposits and also effectively increase their loans. And their loans for the three months, they, are, they have disbursed 500 million through Biashara Smart, which is another innovative product. And this, uh, all this helps to reduce its cost to income ratio and enable it to, be, to move from the brick and mortar banking to uh, innovative ways to reduce the cost. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Um, on the growth of customer deposits slide, you had the previous KGAD 15.8, you've slowed that down to 12.1. Is there any reason for that? Yes, um, because the, customer the, the, the amount of customer deposits is becoming larger and larger, to sustain a 15.8% growth rate will be much more difficult, simply because the Though you see that the, the amount, the absolute growth is almost the same, the percentage growth becomes smaller because of the increasing uh, size of the customer deposits. Okay. Um, and then on the fraud risk, I notice it's one of your key risks. Yes. I just want to know how, how big has the, in, how much have they lost vis-a-vis -vis the industry? Are they the worst? Are they? The problem with this. Uh, the data for cybercrime, it's very hard to concede, uh, to, to, concede, uh, to know how, how much that KCB has lost because they want also to protect their interests so not to, pre to prevent even their customers not to withdraw from, the, um, uh, from their, to withdraw their accounts basically. But the Deloitte report, they say that East African banks have lost more than 4.1 billion Kenya shillings in, t in reference to fraud. So there's no specific amount for KCB. However, basic, based on that, cybercrime fraud and data manipulation risk is one of the key risks that faces banks across the globe. We consider this as a very high risk also for KCB, being a bank. Okay, thank you very much.